Hey everybody, it's Angie and welcome to Hot and Flashy. Today's video is about my recent experience getting Juvederm for the very first time. Uh, while I was there, I also got my Botox freshened up, so I'll touch on Botox a little bit in this video. The reason I'm not going to do full thing on Botox here is that I've done two previous videos on Botox, and if you want to watch uh, one of those, I'll put the link to that below. Recently, I was feeling like my, you know, what do they call these? Nasolabial folds were getting, <laughs> that sounds dirty, doesn't it? Gosh, um, couldn't they come up with a better name for them? Recently, I was feeling like when I got up in the morning that they were very, like, flat and creating a big shadow by the side of my nose. And for about the past year, I've been thinking, like, I kind of want to try fillers and see how it is. So anyway, fast forward a year, I had started seeing a new plastic surgeon to inject my Botox. And he has these outrageous specials because he's trying to build a practice um, nearby. And so in order to get new customers in the door, he's offering uh, syringes of anti-aging fillers and Botox and other treatments at really rock bottom discount prices. So each syringe of Juvederm for half price. Now normally they run about $650 per syringe. And so I was like, gosh, if I could go in there and get a syringe for $325, you know, that's a good price point. I want to at least try it. And that way I'll know if I like it or not. And then I won't be hemming and hawing about it. And then his January special came out and it was $10 a unit on Botox. So I asked him if I could combine the two and very kindly he said yes. Since this guy is a board certified plastic surgeon, I believe he's from Stanford, I was like, geez, his, <laughs> he certainly has the, um, the right credentials and hopefully he's not going to mess me up. So I was happy with what he did with my Botox the first time, so I thought, what the heck, I'll give him the try, a try for this. So anyway, I did shoot some before and after footage so that we'll be able to compare sort of what my forehead and my folds look like before I went into. Then I shot a little more right when I came out of his office to show you really what you're in for with this procedure. And then I have some photos to show you the bruising that I had. So let's get into it. All right, so what is Juvederm? It's a dermal filler and it's made out of mainly hyaluronic acid. So hyaluronic acid is a naturally occurring acid in our skin and what it does is it binds water molecules to it. Now if they were to just inject in plain old hyaluronic acid, your system would absorb it so quickly that it wouldn't make any difference. So what they do is they take it and they combine it with a gel and that makes it so that it sort of stays where they put it, but it looks natural. It's not lumpy and bumpy. Now, I think the original versions of this, they were a little granular. You could be a little bumpy and you could like feel it in there. Uh, it's come a long way since it was first approved by the FDA. And now the latest version of Juvederm is actually quite good. It's in a super smooth gel. For me, I can't feel it. And I can't even really tell the difference that much. If I didn't know that I had had it done, I would not know that I had had it done. Uh, except that in the mornings when I get up and look in the mirror, I'm not like, oh, look at that deep dark shadow over there. So it must be working um, because I'm not noticing that as much, but it's so subtle that, like I said, I even me, knowing I had it done, I wouldn't even know I had it done. And the way it works is that your doctor uses either a needle or um, what I've seen online is this micro cannula thing that looks excellent where they get they can put it in by using less needle pricks. My guy didn't have that and he didn't use it but if you are concerned about the bruising that's the way to go where you have less bruising, less punctures with the needle, um, it's much smaller and so it leaves it does less damage to the sub um, surface of structure of your skin where it tends to you know, push blood vessels and stuff out of the way rather than going right through them and, you know, making them rupture, which is what causes a bruise. Now, the advantage to injecting hyaluronic acid is there has been research done that shows that putting hyaluronic acid in underneath the sur surface of your skin helps your skin to generate more collagen. So it's not only cosmetically plumping up the space and doing the filling that you're getting, but it's also helping your skin to generate more new collagen. I like things that are gonna help my skin to make more new collagen of its own. Because after we turn 30, um, our skin starts <laughs> like shutting down the collagen factor factory. Um, we make about 1% less collagen every year after we're 30. So now that I'm 51, my skin is making 21% less collagen now 
than it was 20 years ago. So that's not good. I mean, every year it adds up, right? All right, so the office visit. So you should expect to be in there anywhere from a half an hour to an hour. And um, what you should do before you go is if you think there's a possibility that you're a bruiser or that you're going to bruise easily, which is very, very common. But in order to minimize the bruising, what you can do is at least a week before you go, you need to stop taking any blood thinners. So if you're on any kind of... Um, you know, aspirin regimen, uh, Advil, NSAIDs, and vitamin E and fish oil are the other ones. Now, if you're on blood thinner for a heart problem, you know, consult your doctor before you stop taking that because you may need that to live. Then the other thing that I read is that you can eat a lot of pineapple before you go because apparently there's an acid in pineapple that helps for less bruising. So somewhere I read it said eat a lot of pineapple the day before you go. All right, so let's just talk briefly about Botox, which is what I also had done that day. Um, Botox is a botulism toxin that's injected directly into the muscles of the face to cause paralysis and then the muscle paralysis causes the skin on top to relax and therefore the deeper wrinkles to um, soften and not be visible. And it is the greatest thing since sliced bread. I love it. I've been getting it about for five to seven years now and always right in here in the 11s. I did have my whole forehead done once and that I didn't like the feeling of. It was too heavy and so I didn't have any expression in my forehead at all and I didn't really like that. Plus it made my brows, like I said, heavy and it made my hoods on my hooded eyes worse. So I have not had that done again. So this time I went and I had them just do the 11s, but then I have them take like an extra five units. What I get is just more of a strip in the middle that's done and then I still am able to have movement on the sides here but without having that kind of crazy Jack Nicholson look of the raised eyebrows all the time but I can raise them if I want to. So that's how I get the Botox. Your metabolism affects how long it lasts. Um, I have a super fast metabolism. Uh, this is the only part of my life that I don't like having a fast metabolism is that my injectables don't last as long. Now where this is my first time with Juvederm, I don't know how long it's going to last but with my Botox it's generally worn off in um, like 10 to 12 weeks weeks, which is three months. A lot of people get four to six months out of it, not me. And even if I get it, you know, consistently and often, still, I used to be able to stretch it out to six months, not anymore. Now it's just worn off. And so to eliminate the chances of bruising, bruising with Botox, same as for the Juvederm. Also, before your visit, make sure that you bring like a compact with you, a makeup touch-up, because when you go into the office, they'll remove your makeup wherever you're having the injectables. They swab it with alcohol so it's sterile so that they don't introduce an infection into the skin. So don't go there with a face full of makeup because they are going to take it off you anyway. They will ask you a number of questions about what you're allergic to. They will have a number of forms for you to sign with all the disclosures, which if you read them and find out what all the potential hazards are with this stuff, you may decide to run screaming from the office. But there are some chances, you know, that bad things could happen. With Botox, it can migrate and you can end up with kind of a palsied, uh, totally droopy look to one eye. Thank goodness it's temporary, but still you have to walk around for three months with like a droopy eye, which is no good. Um, that has not happened to me knock wood. Um, thank goodness, but, you know, and I hope it never does. With the Juvederm, I don't think there are as many kind of potentially bad side effects. Uh, I think it's more just uh, the risk of infection, swelling, irritation, and bruising is all I've heard. I think that hyaluronic acid, since it's in all of our bodies, people tend to not be allergic to it. I've been to places where they numb you and where they don't numb you. And I've gotten the Botox without any numbing and, you know, it's a little painful. You just kind of have to yoga breathe through it and, and you'll get through it. Then he gave me um, a rubber glove filled with ice and I held that to the area for a while. While we were waiting for that to ice, he also, you know, wiped off the makeup here, did the alcohol wipe, and then put some topical numbing agent. I guess the, the, uh, the filler hurts more than the Botox. Then while he was doing the Botox, I held the ice over here. So he did, I think, three around here, three around here, and then he did one, two, and one, two. Because your face works in opposing muscle groups, so if you're gonna paralyze this muscle, this muscle will go into super overdrive and compensate and pull way up. So you also have to do um, a top muscle to make sure that they're both paralyzed and they're not pulling 
you know, against each other, which is why people get kind of that crazy eyebrow, because uh, sometimes they try to give you an eyebrow lift by going out here, which it really does work, but sometimes it looks nuts. And so if you end up with the nutty eyebrow, you should go back and have them do a little Botox up here that will let that um, settle down a little bit if you don't like the look of it, okay? So that's how you handle that. Now, I just read on a website, it said like, oh yeah, and, and what's so great about injectables is that, you know, you can go on your lunch hour from work, or you could drop your kids off at a soccer game and go get it done and come back. And I was, <laughs> I was like, ha, <laughs> that's a laugh. If I came back looking like this, oh my God, my kids would run screaming from me. Which is why I say bring some makeup to touch yourself up after you go. If you're going back to work, or you think you're not going to look different afterwards, you are going to look different for a couple of hours afterwards, especially with the Botox, where the, the, if you have it done in your forehead, the, the skin is so thin that it does make make on me sort of a red angry looking weld. You may have less irritation but you know I have very sensitive skin. I get like this you know big red welt and then of course where he did hit the vein it started to bruise. Okay so then onto the Juvederm here. On this side he did um, three. He did one up here, one here, and one here. And then while he did this one I held the ice over here. And then over here he only did two. One up here and one here I think. So he asked me which side of my face I sleep on when I sleep and I said oh I've actually just started sleeping on my back last year. And he goes well one side of your face is a little more um, it's a little worse than the other which is why he did three over here. He was like I bet when you sleep on your side you sleep on this side. And I was like you're right. So he could tell just by looking at me which side of my face I sleep on and which side needed more. Now if he had his way he would have pumped two vials of Juvederm in there. Since I'm just trying it for the first time you know I like to ease into things. I don't want to come out there looking weird or I don't like the Juvederm look where it's completely flat across here. I don't think that looks natural. When I look at my kids they have you know a plumpness to their cheek. They don't have a plumpness to here and there there always is a shadow in here. There always is a little bit of a not a crease but a, a, an indent in there if the cheek is out here. So, so I was like nope we're gonna do one so he split the vial between both and it might be very very subtle like I said but I would prefer to wade in and do it subtly than to come out of there looking like I don't look like me or like a, a result that looks obviously Juvedermed. I don't really want to ever look obviously Botoxed and Juvedermed. So if you think I do, let me know. <laughs> then I'll have some thinking to do. But I think I still look like me. I think I still look natural and normal. Now this is the part that surprised me. <laughs> After he got done doing the injections, then he goes, open your mouth. And I did. And then he sticks his finger and thumb in there and starts like, ah, massaging from the inside and the outside. And I was like, <laughs> it kind of weirded me out a little bit. <laughs> I didn't know they did that. So anyway, just be prepared for that if your provider does do that. Like it, once they get it in there, then they can kind of massage it into place. And then I was good to go. And so now let me show you the video of me before going into his office. And then you'll see the movement in my forehead and my um, level of folding here. And that's coming up here. So yeah, those little sort of sharp shadows and this kind of droopiness has really been bugging me. So we'll see. And hopefully I can get him to do my Botox too at the same time. So I will see when I come out and let you know what it was like. And now I'll bring in the video of me right after I left his office. And the Juvederm, he said it was surprising. I bled less here and more here, which is unusual. He said most people bleed here, but not here. So he was saying I have a very... Um, lower chance that I will have any bruising over here, which is good. So you can see, I look pretty messed up in this. If I had gone during soccer practice and then gone back to get my kids, oh my gosh. All right, so I'm telling you all the mistakes that I make. I didn't stop the blood thinners before I went, so I did have bruising. I didn't bring makeup with me, so when I went shopping afterwards, I was going to the mall, I looked like Frankenstein. But I did stop at Ulta and have them put some makeup on me. And then I have some pictures of me a couple of days afterwards to show you the bruising that I ended up with. So here comes those. Okay, so while the bruising is a little bit annoying, I didn't really think it was bad. I, w I was surprised at how like teeny these two little bruises were. It was like the two on my forehead that bothered me more because they tended to like, you know, spread. 
but I have a great solution for you. My doctor had told me if you do have some bruising, go out and get yourself some Arnica Montana and I'll put that on three times a day and your bruising won't last as long. And while it didn't clear it up right away, it did make the bruising go away in seven days rather than normally when I bruise, the bruise stays there for a good 14 days. So it cut the time in half, so that was great. This is what I got. It's called Arnicare Cream. So they had that at CVS. You can find it at Whole Foods. It's all natural. It's an herbal remedy. If you have back pain, you can rub it on your back, but it worked great for the bruising. Just a little bit about how to cover a bruise. Oh my gosh, they are so hard to cover that crazy color. So I just wanted to show you quickly what I did and this this really worked great for me. You need a color corrector or a you know a purple green canceler. So I use Armani Master Corrector in color number two I think. Uh, so this is the peach one as you can see and it's a really super thin sheer liquid. It comes with this tiny brush. I tried everything in my arsenal of makeup up there. I tried every foundation I had. I tried every concealer I had. I tried combinations of different things. This was the combination that worked the best. So this is Smashbox Photo Ready uh, Eyelid Primer and this is great for preparing the surface for makeup. So first, don't put anything directly on them. The heavier the layer, it seems like the more the bruise like shines through the layer. So what you do is you just take a little bit of this and you'll put it on the back of your hand, okay? Because you wanna do tiny, tiny, thin layers is the best way to cover up a bruise. All right, then you take a nice um, like flat uh, foundation brush, just pick up a little bit of that and just you know, dab it off really so you barely have any. And then just, you know, I had to go like this, just go in and like hit the bruise with it. The tiniest, thinnest coating that you can get on there, okay? Then do the same with this. Back of the hand, same thing, tiny, thin coating, cover, cover, cover. Now, if, if it's not completely covered at that point, you wanna do a second coat, that's fine because you put on super thin coats, you can do it again, that, then that, that, then that, until you get the coverage that you want. And as the very last step, if you have a setting powder, just take, this is um, ID Bear Minerals Mineral Veil. This was great. Just take your setting powder and a nice fluffy brush, dip it in there, tap it off, and then just set by tapping, set the powder over the bruise, and you will be good all day. With some of the other things that I tried, it would be worn off in a couple of hours. I'd pass a mirror and I'd be like, oh, oh no, my bruises are out again. And I'd have to go back and, you know, re retouch them up again, but with that combination, it lasted all day. Now that you've seen the um, before and the immediately after, now let me scooch over here and I'll bring in the before again and we can see two weeks after, because really it takes these things two weeks to really, to really kick in. And I'm gonna come in a little closer because I know that video is from a bit closer. There's me trying to scowl. I see I can't bring my eyebrows together. I can still raise them. So I'm trying to think if there's anything else that I forgot to mention. Oh, there is one thing. The great thing about Juvederm is whatever happens and you don't like it, guess what? It's reversible. They have this other thing that they can inject in and it dissolves it and it'll just go away. Botox, not so much. Once it's in there and it's in your muscles, there's nothing you can do about it and you are stuck with it. That is pretty much it. I think that's everything I wanted to say about Juvederm. So while it is expensive, I think it does work. I'm happy with my results so far and only time will tell how long this is going to last. I know this is going to wear off and I'm going to be getting it done again. I do it about three to four times a year. I try to push it off as long as I can before I get it redone. Just because, you know, it's hard for me to pump $1,200 into my face here. And now if I start adding this, my gosh. Oh, some people ask if you can feel it. I gotta say, I cannot feel it in there. Like it's not lumpy. It just, it just feels firmer, I guess. You know, like the rest of my skin when I press on, especially in the hollow of my cheek, like, oh, it goes way in there. This is definitely firmer. And hopefully it's already starting to help my skin to generate its own new collagen. So that's great. So, so far for me, a win-win. I'm so glad I had it done. That's it for today, everybody. Thanks for watching. I hope you found the video informative. I really appreciate your time. And as always, take care and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.